Ace salvager Drew Pritchard has been collecting, selling and enjoying antiques for 21 years. That chair's not been, not been finished well enough. His business is the ultimate in recycling, buying discarded or unwanted items and restoring them for future generations. You can't do this job without appreciating the history behind every object. And the people who I'm dealing with, they appreciate it too. But that can make bargaining tough. But really, to be honest, I have so much fun buying and selling with people that it doesn't matter. I just enjoy it. Today, Gavin is accompanying Drew, and they're driving to the edge of the Cotswolds to Cheltenham, a spa town since 1716, when mineral springs were discovered. It quickly developed into a pleasure resort for wealthy visitors. And centuries later, its historic promenade and squares are still enticing tourists. The sun always shines on Cheltenham, I think. It's absolutely stunning. Look at the architecture. But we are here today to go into Cheltenham College. Not to learn. <laughs> Not to learn, no. Don't think they'd let us in to learn. <laughs> I'm John Champion. I have the great privilege of being bursar of this, uh, this fabulous school. Uh, we are the oldest of the Victorian public schools, and as bursar, I'm responsible for everything that isn't really teaching. Through my team, we look after the finances, the grounds, the gardens, uh, personnel matters, catering, you name it, we do it. Founded in 1841, Cheltenham College was originally a school for boys only and divided into classical and military sides until the mid 20th century. In 1998, the school became fully co-educational. So we're hoping to find some stuff in this college, then, aren't we? Well, they've been doing some work. Uh, they're going to have a bit of a clear out, and they've mentioned tables, lighting, seating, and religious ornament as some of the things they might want to get rid of. This looks like it here. Cheltenham College. And blimey, isn't it swanky? That's gorgeous. John? Drew. Good to meet well, you. How are you doing? Welcome to Cheltenham. Gavin, hi. Good Let's to meet you. Come on in. Thanks. Oh, wow. It's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. Really beautiful. So, come on in. Oh, wow. It's a. Uh... Very, very impressive, isn't it? We're rather proud of it. Wow. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Look at this, look at the ceiling there. Look at those fabulous glass there. I love that glass. I see there's an awful lot of dedications to and war memorials here yep. for past pupils. College has a really, really strong military history. Um, we have, uh, for instance, the 14 Victoria Cross winners from wow. college through the years and have lost uh, 1,500 pupils, or, or old pupils, old boys, uh, in various conflicts through the years. So every major British conflict, there's yeah. been yeah. an old Cheltonian? Absolutely, <laughs> since 1843, uh, right up to the most recent conflicts. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hugely important part of our history. I mean, the uh, Reredos, this here at the East Window, yeah, that, this that is, is truly spectacular. Again, this has a military aspect to it. This is part of the uh, memorial to those who fell in the Boer War. All of that is? Yeah. yeah. God, it is spectacular. The altarpiece as well, that's it's wonderful. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. We buy, and I've bought hundreds and hundreds of church interiors. This one's not for sale, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it. It's too good. Yeah. It's an incredible condition. Right, this is spectacular. Can we see more of the school, please? You certainly can. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's great. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's like Hogwarts, isn't it? It's, been, <laughs> it's, it's, rather, it's been a chapel, it's been a library, it's been a museum, and now a dining hall. Ah, OK. This is why I'm looking at one of my favourite things. This is why we're here. Benches. Tables and benches. These are fab. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. I love big tables, big refectory tables like this. Do you know what? The benches are lovely as well. Nice, aren't they? Oh, they're beautiful. These are great because they're all oak. So do you see similar many other places you visit? No. These are much better than the norm because it's a nice big single 
oak plank to most of them. That one's yeah. two. Um, but this, the sort of double pillar on the stretcher there, that's unusual. Well, I think if I was able to buy the tables, how many do you think you've got? Uh, there must be about 40 of them in total. Well, I'd, um, I'd quite happily write you a cheque for well over £20,000 for this lot. Well, there might come a time when we would happily accept that cheque, but... Uh... And that's not including the benches. Right, OK. So it would be an awful lot more money. And how much would the benches add to that? Well, um, so how many have you got? 40, 80, uh, to... Uh, probably add another 12,000 to the benches. OK. That's not bad, okay. is it? That's you bad. could round that up to 50,000, presumably? No. <laughs> Are you going to deliver them as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that will yeah. be delivered. <laughs> we, we, I'm sure we could do a deal. They're, they're definitely not for sale at the moment, but who knows about the future? Who knows? We'd probably, yeah, 50 yeah. grand. Let's yeah. have them. Yeah. Should we come back tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Go and get the van. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you. That's Good. great. Let's get on to them somewhere else, please. Yeah, perfect. Can we go, Jens? <laughs> right, so this is the... This so is welcome, the welcome to the dungeons. <laughs> it is a bit of a dungeon, isn't it? God, it's huge. This is huge. It goes the full length of the building, and we need to have a good clear out here. So, so this is where... If you want to help us make a start on it, that'll be good. I will do. I will do. And I can help you out very quickly as well. What about that table? This, uh, this may be of interest. What's it doing uh -huh. down here? This sad state, isn't it? Yeah, it's not in uh, it's not in great repair, but we've got our own estates team here, and we would refurbish this and put it back into to good use pretty quickly. Yeah. So, but you're not using it at the moment, eh? No. Not at all. Just... This 1920s oak refectory table was manufactured specifically for the college and was last used as a mail table in the school common room. With some restoration, it could fetch one thousand five hundred pounds. Is this? Can this go? Yeah, this could go. Yeah, um, what, what would you want for this one, then? Well, look, you're, you're the man who's buying. OK. Uh, so you'll need to make us an offer for it. Right. Um, what about, um, in this state, 500? Pretty reasonable bid, I think. You know, my problem is, as I say, I've got a team here who can refurbish this yeah. and we can put it back into use and, and would have put it back into use. And 500 doesn't give me much to, you know, you know to replace yeah, it with, yeah, yeah. To, okay. to, to come up with some alternative. So, so, so what, what, what would So 500's not really doing it. OK. Well, OK, full final bid then, I suppose, 750, and that's it. I can't go any higher than that. No. OK. So I think that's, that's, that's where I'm at with it, so I can't really do any more than do we, that. Should we have a look at other items and then see... Yeah, OK, if, let's do that. I'd rather do that, if actually. You, if you don't find anything else, then you'll have lots of money left and you might be able to do a little bit better than <laughs> 7 <7.50. laughs> no. no, we buy lots of these. Whatever I've got to do today, I do need to buy that table. It's good stock. It's in great condition and it's unrestored and it's right in front of me. We have to buy that table. Ah. There's a lot of modern yeah, stuff, so... isn't there? A lot of this stuff in here is uh, props for drama productions. Do you have a theatre here as well? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Still more. Oh, no, no. What, what, what about these in here, John? This stuff. Can I go in there? Uh, yeah, I think it's open. What have you spotted? It's this, um, the cross and the nativity figures, mainly the cross, to be honest right. with you. Ugh. There we Yeah. I'm going to grab that cuff and take it out. That's nice, isn't it? So you could find a home for that? Um, I actually collect them. I live right. in a church and I've got a, a, quite a large collection right, of okay. these things. This late 19th century church cross is made of brass and set with glass stones. Originally, it would have been at the altar of the school chapel and is worth around £800. So you're not, not in use? It's not in use, and it could be for sale at the right price. So what would you want for this? Because it's not something you can replace once it's gone. So 400. Um. Drew Pritchard is at the prestigious public school Cheltenham College in Gloucestershire. It's a 
very, very impressive, isn't it? We're rather proud of it. In the basement, his bid for an oak refectory table wasn't accepted. Now he's got his eye on this brass cross, but the bursar is holding out for a better deal. So 400, you could? Yeah, oh, that would be the absolute top. Um, I can pay for it, really. I think that's, that's pretty fair. Well, if I do that for 400, yeah. will you give me 850 for the table as well? Um, I'd give you eight. I'd go to eight, and we do 1,200. So 1,250 for the two. You don't teach maths here, do you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... Go on, 1,250 for the two. Yeah, 1,250. Yeah, I'll have those. Thank you. Much appreciated. Oh, you can hold that now. Thanks. The cross is a little expensive, to be honest with you, but the table's on the money. That's OK. We can make money at that price. Yeah, it's like the older stuff. Coffins. Yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can do a coffin or a double base. There's still the green things. Oh, God, you're right in front of you. Couldn't see for looking, as my ground would say. I'm not sure about that. No. Keep for both drama. I think that means no. Yeah. <laughs> in there. This, this, uh, this, this mirror. Yeah. What's, uh, where's this one from then? I have no idea where that's come from. Is it Swede? No, it's uh, red felt. There was a fashion in the Victorian period for covering everything in, in red, red felt. felt. They'd cover yeah. Yeah. picture frames, stools, yeah. uh, even bookcases yeah. in it. OK, Gav, can you just help me just lift this over? Let's have a look at the back. Let me get out. Yeah, it's dead on. It's absolutely right. This overmantle mirror was manufactured in the late 19th century. It's covered in felt and decorated with brass stars. It used to hang in the school staff room. With minimal restoration, it could fetch £1,800. Can this go? Are you using it? It's got to be a lot of money, hasn't it? Um, well, it's not going to be 50 quid, put it no. that way. No. It's got a nice old plate in it. Yep. It's quite sparkly. 600? No, I wouldn't sell it for that. No. Uh, largely because I don't know yeah. what the background is. And sure. Yeah, that. Okay. So where, where, where would you be happy letting this go? 600. And 25% of your profit on it. Um, I'd always usually rather just buy it. Yeah. It's just tidier. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's up to you though. If, if that's the only yeah. way, I can, if that's the only way I can, but I will. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. You sure? Yep. Yeah. You happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a deal. Yeah, thanks. Um. He's ensuring that he gets a good deal. That is his job, and he's done a very clever and a very good deal, and I'm happy to stick with it with him. So I'm going to be looking at Drew's website now on a regular basis to see what that mirror is selling for, and, uh, yeah, I'll be on the phone to him straight away as soon as it sells. John, thank you so Very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Really thank appreciate it. Nice yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Have a journey. It was a great day. The college is... I wish I'd gone there to school. Imagine going there. Imagine the difference that would make to your life going to that school. I wouldn't be doing this then, though, would I? Oh, oh God. Don't, don't toy with me. It's true. <laughs> Back at base, Drew and his team unload his purchases. Hello, can we have a hand, please? Hello. Hello, mate. Have you had a good time? Yeah, good. Um, we've got some good pieces, actually. It's a um, oak refectory, refectory table. Refectory table. 
and there is a top. But it's a particularly nice top as well. Doesn't need much work. All we're going to do is strip all the old varnish off it. Look at this top. What do you think of that? Fantastic. Isn't that great? But we've got more. OK. We've got, we've got a nice bit of table decoration. Hi, sir. Where are that? You can have your own Fantastic. Yeah. I like all these different stones around the bottom. Yeah, all, uh, yeah. Different. And there's more. We've got another piece. Oh, I like that. That's Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. Is it velvet? It's velvet. Yeah, velvet covered. Brass. Studs. Detail. It's absolutely beautiful, this. It is, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, let's put it somewhere safe. Fabulous place, though. What a place. No sooner is Drew back than he's off again, and T is back in the driving seat. They're travelling over 250 miles north, to the small village of Hewitt in Northumberland, and Drew's on the trail of some specific architectural salvage. We're going to go and see a couple who live in a castle. Robin purchased the property in 1979. Robin specialises in restoring antique gilt mirrors and pine and gesso chimney pieces. He is a retired architectural antique dealer, one of the first antique dealers in architectural antiques alone. But what has happened, they've sort of gone through all that process and come out the other side as specialists in Robert Adam chimney pieces. Robert Adam is a Scottish architect, a very, very well-known Scottish architect of renown and incredible skill. Although known as Coupland Castle, it was built as a tower house in the 16th century. A farmhouse was added in 1726, and finally a Georgian extension a century later in 1826. I love a good castle, to be honest with you. Uh, ideally, he's got some bits and bobs for us, you never know. Um, what I'm looking for, really, is architectural elements, maybe some pieces of furniture. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Hello. 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 Hi. Do you want a gel? Please to meet you. How are you doing? Hello. 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 Welcome to Copeland Castle. Thank you very much. It's our home. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm. I like Thank it. You. I like it. Um, wonderful. So, um, I'm here like to see some stuff. You are, yes. Oh, wow. A wonderful hallway. Thank you. That's yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. It's a well, big it's, old house, isn't it? It's where the farmhouse meets mm. the country house. Yeah. So you can see by the height of the doorways. Mm. Yes, yeah. And we yeah. have the original mm. step. Oh, I see. So that used to be the old front door here? Yes. OK. Well, I'd love to have a quick scoot round the house. Oh, it's a lovely room, isn't it? Thank you. It's our favourite room. It's just the proportions of these Georgian rooms are just wonderful. The big windows, I love them. Is, is this some of your work, this chimney piece here? We, we, we put the swan in. You did? Yeah, it's a nice one, isn't it? Yes, Good it's, size. It's got seashells on it. It's an Edinburgh one. I see. I've never seen these shells before, these conch shells. Never seen that. The shells are very typical of the Edinburgh makers. They were made they? by a shipyard. This chimney piece is part of Robin and Fiona's home and not for sale. But Robin still has a hoard of fireplaces from his days as an architectural antique dealer. Ah, it's your showroom. Yes. Now, I love this one here. That's lovely. Tactile. So, very uh, tactile. Yeah, beautiful. So it's Belletian moulding, this type of moulding, this here. This is a really sort of classic sort of Robert Adam one, isn't it, really? You can see these classical Greek-type urns here with the bow and swags below then, and swags then again and, and ribbon. The condition of these things, considering they always are covered in paint whenever you buy them, is remarkable. A lovely. So how long has it taken you to sort of build up a collection like this? Did it take a, a good few years, I well, should I imagine? started dealing in the mid-70s. In these? Wow. So you must have sold hundreds of them. It's not thousands. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate these Adams chimney pieces, and they're really, really good. But I only buy chimney pieces if they're sort of stone or possibly marble. Um, or unrestored. If I found an unrestored Adam chimney piece, I would buy it because I could trade it out. 
but a fully restored one, unless I've got a customer waiting, I can't use that. Very nice, very nice. Nothing in here for me to buy, I'm afraid. It's all too good, if you know what I mean. It's very specialised, very beautiful. So the main purpose of Drew's visit hasn't been successful, but Robin and Fiona are happy for Drew to check out their storage areas in the hope that the trip to the north can still be saved. We have a lot of storage, which means we don't get rid of anything. Yeah. That's nice. I'll tell you what, I do like this here. I grab the... I'll be careful with it. What puts it... That's it. That's it. That's nice. What do you think? Is this um, something you'd consider getting rid of? Drew's in Northumberland at Coopland Castle, where he had been hoping to purchase some antique fireplaces. Nothing in here for me to buy, I'm afraid. It's all too good. But never one to let an opportunity go, he's now looking in the storage areas and has spotted this light. What do you think? That's lovely. I really like that. This single fluted opaline light was designed in England during the early 1920s. With its original brass gallery and some new wiring, it could get nearly £300. That's really, really rather lovely. What would you, um, what would you want for that then, Robin? I don't know. Give me a clue. Where do you want to be? 50. 50? That's very reasonable, I would say. I'll shake your hands at 50. Thank you very much. Thank you very oh, much. Up the offer. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if I can give you a bit more money with when I buy something else, maybe. Let's, you, let's try that. But um, <laughs> that's very reasonable. That's lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Only a small purchase, but there are still some outbuildings to look through. So this is just bits of architectural salvage and lighting and odds and sods. Yes. Lighting parts. We do lots of lighting, so I'm always looking for bits as well, even if it's just chain or... I quite like this, Robin. What about this, um, this dome here? have had a little display in there of some sorts. Where did this come from? Is this something you're using or not? <laughs> it would be good to have cheese then. <laughs> <laughs> I like buying them. They look good whatever you do with them. It sets a room off as well because they're clean. They look great. And this one was on a hardwood and then an ebonised base, which has got a little bit of wear to the ebonising. So the whole thing was just really attractive. 19th century glass domes were individually hand blown by skilled Victorian artisans and kept the dust off rare or precious items. This one could fetch 200 pounds. What, what's this one worth? Well, I, I offer this, I made a boo boo. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Only a little. You made a little boo boo on the last one, I have to say. It was a little bit cheap. A little bit cheap. I think you were sort of, you've, you've given it to me for half price, I think, the last that one, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. If I gave you, it's not, I'll give you 50 pounds for that. And I think that sort of rounds, makes that a bit fairer. Uh, I think that sounds pretty, pretty I think, fair. I think yeah. that sort of evens things up a bit. That's so we'll have a deal on that, shall we? Thanks, Robin. There you go. I feel a bit better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay a little bit more than I'd normally pay for one of those because I got the light too cheap. So. I now feel we're sort of a bit fairer. It sort of redresses the balance and sort of restores my antique karma. I had a really Lovely nice day. You. Thank you very much. Wonderful Thank fireplace, this wonderful house. Lovely, Lovely to Thank meet you. Thank you so much. You. And you guys. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Right. See you, much. journey. Thank See you. you. See you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. The next day, Drew and T are straight back on the road after receiving a phone call from a new contact. It's a long five-hour drive south to North London, but they hope it will pay off. We're in North London today, next to Wembley, Wembley. which I've never been to. No, I've not been here before. Uh, to meet a guy called Mark, who runs a company called Prop Hire and Deliver. Right. My name's Mark Bradley. Essentially, what we do is hire props to the film industry we specialise in uh, sports props and medical props. So everything from a golf ball to a boxing ring. 
The only problem with going to places like this is that the pieces that I want, which are the rare, interesting and desirable bits, are usually the bits that are rented the most. Yeah. So it'll, we'll see. It's just the look of the drawer, really. I think it's down here. There you go. Prop hire and deliver. Hello. Mark. That's true. How are you doing? Hi, right. how are you, you Mark? Um, it's a prop hire and deliver. Thank you very much. This is a fantastic place you've got here. Can I have a look around? Certainly. Please. I know that you're into vintage sort of things, so on that basis, there are a few bits and pieces that hopefully will interest you. OK. All right. Football goals, football nets, you know, all the benches, fly benches. OK. Slatted benches, old school benches, the form ones, you know. Right, so footballs, every sort of ball you could possibly ask for, branded, unbranded. And skateboards, do you mean? Skateboards. You have to have everything. <laughs> we have to have everything. We had one of those. Yeah. I remember going down the village hill on one of those. Yeah, about, never... about six of us. <laughs> Lethal. Yeah, exactly. You're you're smashing any... knees to get. Yeah. Never any skin on your knees or your no. Box of like stuff. Those. I like those. They're quite cool, aren't they? Is there demand for these? Uh, definitely. I think these I like. They're very cool. These leather and suede punching bags are from the 1920s and the original leather and lacing is still intact. The ball sits on top of a cast iron sprung base. They're worth around 500 pounds each. These, uh, I love. I don't... I'm, punch bags. Are these for sale? Mm, mm, not really, no. to be honest with you. I like that a lot. What would you use them for, then? It's just decoration. Paint someone's face yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, um... That's really nice. It's just a feeling that they give out to people. Do you know when you, you're doing a shop interior mm -hmm. or a house or a club or something Don't like that? Don't mess about with it. Well, no, it's got a macho feel to it. It's masculine, it's sporty, it's engineering, it's leather, it's, you know, it's got all those bits mm -hmm. right. that we're already looking for. Um, but these are the sort of things I want to buy. I mean, is this something that's really popular to hire? It, I was going to say it is. That's the problem, really. I don't think we'll be selling that just on the basis it's such a popular thing to hire out. Really? But they're a definite no-no. Um, afraid so. OK. Slightly disappointed, but not surprised he's not going to sell those. Very rare item, particularly in number like that. Conditions good, unrestored. So, okay, fishing, well, climbing... Fishing, fishing and climbing, I suppose it's uh -huh. got a bit. Well, I don't know if they're associated, but <laughs> hockey sticks, <laughs> Joey hockey sticks. <laughs> Baseball bats. <laughs> Baseball bats? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never know when they're going to come in handy, exactly. Do one of those in the van. Flags. <laughs> Medical equipment. That's an ear. We can move some of this stuff out of the way and make it slightly easier to get into. Don't worry. God, he was a big chap, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the size of that. <laughs> it needs to be a bit earlier. Yeah. A bit earlier than that one. Yeah, I'll leave it here. Thank you. <laughs> Does that light up? Does that work? Yeah. Mm. Maybe. 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 I think, again, too new, okay. to be honest. Sort of more... More that type. That type of thing. I mean, is this something you consider getting rid of? Well, we haven't learned to that in a little while, so maybe persuaded on that one. I think it's a bit new. Is that my only worry? Mm -hmm. Looks a bit too perfect, doesn't it? It's too new. Yeah. What I've really got to find is something just like that, but earlier again, it's got to be early unrestored, cool-looking, and it's an original finish. So that's what I'm looking for all the time, and it's incredibly hard to find. Are we all right to go upstairs? Yep, feel free. Oh, thank you. So more medical stuff to see if you can spot anything old. Here, you've got some yeah. trolleys and stuff in here. That yeah. This one's yeah, the around. oldest one you've got. It's the trolley that the surgeon would have had all his kit laid out on. It's an earlier variation. It's much, much better made than the later ones. It looks cooler. You know, you can have this as a drinks trolley, you could have it put a TV on it. It's got that feeling that you could use it for something else. That would be, again, something I'd probably be interested in. Is that something you hire out a lot? 
Uh, we do hire that out quite a bit. See all, see all the rest there, they're all, they're all too new. That's the only old yeah. one you've got, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, with the trolley, I think we're going to struggle. There's two there that are newer, but exactly what you said is true. The newer ones, they let go. The older one, don't want to sell. So, I mean, it's up to you, but I don't know. No, they're too workaday, those, the stainless ones. They've got to be the earlier ones like that. Okay. I don't blame I, I was fairly sure you weren't going to get rid of it. Mark, there was something I spotted when we were doing our initial quick walk round. OK. I wouldn't mind having a look at. Lead on. I've got... Thank you. Thank you. My uh, gut reaction is... Yeah. I think you already know what I'm going to go and look at, don't All you? Because right. I couldn't miss it. You can't miss it. It's that exercise bike at the back. Well spotted. Well spotted, I have to say. It's a beautiful thing. It's a 19... Uh, late 1950s, early 1960s exercise bike. They're uh, very desirable. Do you know the ones where you do that and the whole yeah, thing exactly, moves exactly like, a, like a horse yeah. almost? Yeah. It sort of gallops down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the beautifully engineered, highly desirable and very, very sexy looking thing. Even the seats. Are I was going to say, the seat being yeah. chrome and everything is yeah, what yeah, really yeah. sets it off as well. This type of exercise equipment was manufactured by Exercycle from 1932. By the 1950s, fully automatic motor-driven bikes like this one were released, promising a full body workout while sitting down. With minimal restoration, it could fetch £5,000. It's chrome, it's beautiful, it's and fabulous. it is irreplaceable, so... Would, I, would 500 quid buy it? No, no. Would 800 no, quid buy it? No. Would two grand buy it? No. It is irreplaceable, really. Two and a half grand buy it? No. That's me done. That's me done. All I, done at two and a half, yeah? yeah it's, that's, a bit of, that's a bit of kit, isn't it? It really is. I right. think it's probably the best, for me, the best thing here. Yet another item that Drew wants isn't available to buy. Is his trip down south going to be a waste of time? I'll tell you what else is there. I don't know if, if, if... Am I right there? Is that a false leg? Probably will be. I can see it. I can get up there. Do you want a leg up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, give us a leg up, see? There we go. One, two. Yeah. All right, hang on. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Oh. I like that. That's cool. Oh, oh dear. He's fallen. His foot's coming to bits. Don't mind too much about that coming off. Uh-huh. We've got engineering underneath it. What's so? I mean. Do you, do you, did you know that was there? I didn't know that was there. <laughs> Truth be told, I didn't know that was there, so I'll have to find out about that one. But, um... Okay. Well, that is something. I do like any anatomical figures, particularly hands and arms, oh, right, okay. or whole bodies. Uh -huh. I'm just wondering how you release, release that. The, is that yeah. that? That must be to release the pressure to get your leg in. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's, That's how they work, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I like that. Right, and then you can look in place if you want it, yeah. This prosthetic leg was manufactured at the end of the First World War, after wooden legs were deemed too heavy and cumbersome. This artificial limb is made of polished alloy, a lighter type of metal thought to last longer. It could sell for up to three hundred pounds. What's a, what's a? Uh, I'm gonna have to give you that piece of second-hand leg worth. How much is it to hire that for a day? Twenty quid. Twenty quid. Uh -huh. All right. Fifty quid. You have to go up from there, I'm afraid. Fifty-five quid. Oh, if you're going up the fibers, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, what we're going to want to pay for that. Uh, it's quite sculptural. I think I'm going to top out at a hundred quid. I don't want to pay any more for it. To be perfectly honest with you, I think if I had a better foot, uh -huh. probably be pushed to a couple of hundred pounds for a nice one like that. Mm. Can we see a little bit more out of it? A little bit more might persuade me. One hundred and ten. That's it. That's me done. One hundred and twenty quid. One hundred and twenty quid, and we're done. No, one ten. One fifteen. Make it with her. There you go. Deal. Thank you. There you go. So you can find all the bits of foot that've been lying around <laughs> now, and we'll stick them all back on. <laughs> it's uh, quirky. It's unusual. It's macabre. It's odd. It's different. Maybe there's a market for it. I'm here. I've got to buy something. I've got to pay the diesel. I've got to make some profit out of the day. Yeah, I'll take... 
Lego. Lovely. Mark, true. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Very, very Thanks lovely. a lot. Thank, Thank you, you guys. very much. See you. Cheers. So, uh, how was that for you today, then? It was what I thought would happen, which is we found some bits that we couldn't buy. Yeah. It was a shame. I think today was more about just a contact. Yeah. To be perfectly honest with you, wasn't it? It was a contact. Back at base, Drew checks in on some of the items from Cheltenham. The mirror the boys have now cleaned, and it's come up as I thought it would. It's just very, very original and untouched. The table we got from there as well, that's come up beautifully. And the good news is that the mirror and the table have both sold immediately. They've both gone to the same person and they're both winging their way to California. So, extremely fast sale was on the website for less than an hour. It's business as usual in Conway and French polisher Alex has tipped off Drew about a family member who might have some items for sale. So Drew and Gavin head off on the short 50-mile drive east to Liverpool. Famous, of course, for the Beatles, it's also known for its Victorian architecture, with the largest collection of National Heritage-listed buildings outside of London. I love Liverpool. I think the centre of Liverpool is staggeringly beautiful. And do you know what? Some of the antiques that come out of Liverpool are unbelievable. Gav, you know where we're off to today? It's Alex's uncle, isn't it? Yeah. Alex, uh, Alex the French polisher, his uncle is Dave Webster, and he's a very well-known and highly respected sculptor in Liverpool. We've been making sculpture for a living for about 40 years, on and off in Liverpool, sometimes abroad. When I mentioned to Alex, my nephew, who I was retiring, he said, Drew might be interested in some of the stuff that's here. Uh, some of it, you know, it's not great monetary value, but I'd like it to go to somebody who's interested in this kind of thing. Sculptor, been in the building, you know, 40-odd years. I think that could be quite good. There we go, this is the place, isn't it? Check this out, Gav. Wow. Hello. Dave. Hi. Drew. Hi, Drew. Good Dave, to see you. Yeah. Good. Hello, Gavin. Gavin. Nice to meet you. This is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, something I've been working on for a while. It's... Um, you all right to touch it? Yeah, sure. It's a sort of uh, wax clay. Oh, God, yeah. So it'll stay like that for a year. You can work on it forever. And but then cast doesn't... and then reuse the clay. Really? Yeah, absolutely. How long has that taken you to make? Um, I've been doing it for the last year on and off. I only do it in between jobs. It's something oh, for myself, you know, wow. some piece of sculpture I'm doing. OK, well, let's have the grand tour then, please. So what sort of stuff are you looking for? All sorts of everything, really. I'll know it when I see it. I'll tell you what I, you might have is, do you know the old, um, uh, sculptor stands with that, the turn on the top? Have you got any old ones of those or old sort of tables like this, older versions? I've got probably two old stands, yeah. With just a square or circular turn. There you go. That, that's it. I've got two of those, yeah. Got two of those. What are you going to... Are you keeping... Do you use them? Uh, no, I've got the, the more modern one, which will suit me at home. You know, I've only got a small studio at home. So as long as they've got some nice old age to them, which these have, yeah? Can we see the other one? Yeah, sure. It's through in the front room. If yeah, please. Through, yeah. Nice it's good, isn't it? Good looking, isn't it? This is the other stand here. I like this one. Is this one? No, no. No? That's no. I'm taking <laughs> That's that one off. I like that one. This is the one. Oh, I see. Same, Same as. Yeah, yeah. Slightly different. Shorter stem, but it's slightly thicker, so you get a bit more weight on that one. Brilliant. Yeah. That's... that's so... I mean, I'd love to buy them. They'll either go to somebody who's going to use them for sculpture or we'd yeah. use them at a trade stand, wouldn't we? Because they'd look brilliant if we had, you know, a couple of busts or something on them. Yeah. But really, really good. These two revolving sculptor stands were made in the early 20th century, designed in a traditional triangular style and made of oak. They're used to elevate and rotate a work in progress. They could fetch £500 each. What do you, what do you want from Dave? 
Uh, under Quidditch? Yes. That's Quite lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I do like as well. I love all these busts you've got over here, particularly all this lot put there. No, they're the Beatles statues off the Hard Day's Night Hotel. They're the original models are made to take the casts off. Oh, OK. John what about Lennon. this John Lennon one? That's a really famous yeah, one, isn't he's, it? Yeah, uh, he's on the Hard Day's Night Hotel, yeah. So oh. that Paul, George, Ringo. And they're the early ones when he was a kid, when he was 17, 18, sort of thing, like just Elvis, kicking off. The, old, wow. the big quiff. And, they all yeah. want to look like Elvis. These, these boats? Yeah, yeah. Where that, these pond like, yachts? That's like a Mersey flat um, that came out of the school. I wouldn't mind having a look at those, to be honest with you. OK. Can we get them down? You want to get those down now? Oh, my. A little, little ladder, yeah? It's uh, got a great shape. It's like an ice skate. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's super, isn't it? Put that one down there. Oh, that one. That's a beauty. That's a stunner, that, Isn't yeah. that lovely? That's an absolute stunner. This is the one that really interests me, to be honest. And this is what, um... I think it's been like a Mersey flat. It used to be a Mersey flat. They were like a barge with sails that worked the Mersey. And uh, I don't think there's any, any remaining. Sorry. That's... that's lovely. This English Mersey flat replica boat is modelled after the ones that worked on the River Mersey in the mid-18th century. With some restoration, it could fetch £800. The other two are pond yachts from the same era and are worth around £300 each. OK, well, what do you want for these, then? Which ones are you interested in? Um, I'm interested in this one. I'd say that one, that one and that one. OK. So, 80 quid. Yeah. Um, 100 quid for that, because I think if you do that, it's going to cost you a few bob to put it right, but that's, that's a, a lovely it's... thing. OK, 80 quid, 100 quid. What about the big one? Um, um, again, 100 quid. So, what, 280? Um, can you do um, 250 of the three? Don't want to bash you too hard with it. Go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'd like to see them... I'd like to see them... Uh, Somebody having them, who loves them? Thanks, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just got Gavin two days very, very tricky work. I've bought three, you know, ancient pond yachts in a sculptor's warehouse in Liverpool, and that's just quite normal for us, to be honest with you, it's, but not what I expected. So what's in here? Uh, it's where I store stuff and make some of the little models. So these are, the, like, the miniatures of the uh, Hard Day's Night Hotel sculptures, you know. What are those torsos made out down there? They're like a very, very hard plaster. That's quite nice, that. And it's plaster? It's very, very hard, sort of stone-based plaster, yeah. And I put a bit of bronze on it. But they're new? Yeah, they're, they're made. I've made them, yeah. They're not old. There's, there's four of them, and there's quite a nice female one. What do you normally get for them? Well, you, if you take them as in the condition they're in and you want to fix them up, you have them for 20 quid each. I'm not sure if there's enough age to... Uh... No. Oh, no, no, yeah. too, too, too new for me. Very, very good, though. OK, bring it down. Good. Are the boats in there? No. Sorted. Thank you very much. See you again. Good fun. Thank you. See you soon. Enjoy your uh, restoration. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Ta -da. Take care. Yeah, it was a good day then. Dave was a thoroughly nice fellow, yeah, wasn't he? Nice bloke, wasn't he? 
Good luck, Alex. Went to see uh, Alex's uncle. Oh, the sculptor. Yeah, Dave. And um, guess what we bought from a sculptor? A sculptor's stand. You think? Yeah. Nice. Aren't they great? Aren't they super for display? Display mm. your photography. They're lovely. What yeah. else? Bought, strangely. Oh. This. Ooh, a boat. <laughs> Pond yachts, which are coming off now, and this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that now. Pond yacht. It's oh. called a Liverpool flat. Or a Mersey flat. And there, there you go. <gasps> Ooh, I like that one. Go on. These two are mm. for decoration for you to use for. You're kidding. No, for <laughs> photography. So if Gav waxes and polishes them all up. Oh, true, they're amazing. Aren't they lovely? But they're just bits. This is the money this is piece. The, the work See this as well. It's got oh, LaSalle that. Liverpool on there. It's apps, it's beautifully made. Love it. Isn't it lovely? Love it. Happy? Mattel, please. Get rid of that one. Aye, aye, sailor. Look who's here! <laughs> <laughs> you won't like this. You won't like this. It's a little weird. Oh! oh. <laughs> See? Boy! Yeah. <laughs>